Oh, camera won't focus. Good morning, everyone. Let's just get the camera to focus. There we go. Good morning. Welcome to my second DSLR 101 live stream lesson from comfort of my very humble abode. Um, <clears throat> so last week we talked about ISO um, and how the ISO is basically a, um, it's a measure, how the camera sees light. And that then gives you your base level. So the other settings within the camera can then make sure you get the correct exposure. So the ISO tells the camera how much light there is, um, and yeah, it then allows you to go from there. The next part of the camera we're going to talk about is something called the aperture. Now the aperture is kind of cool, actually. I mean, aperture is kind of my kind of my go-to. The aperture is, as a food photographer, the aperture is my prime concern, um, as well as. The ISO. The ISO, as we know, a low ISO value will help you maintain high, clear quality images. Yeah, so really fine detail. So not noisy if you go up to a high end, 800, 1600, 3200, 6400, starts to get noisy. So, yeah, you will find that you will get, by keeping a low ISO, you keep a nice high image quality. Now, the aperture for me as a food photographer is so key. Um, you know, We'll find out more about it in a second, but the aperture, in all intents and purposes, helps you control the amount of detail in around your main point of focus and around your main subject. So for me as a food photographer, that's so key. You know, I want this lovely, beautiful chocolate cake in focus, but I don't necessarily want the background in focus. Not don't necessarily want the crumbs I've forgotten. I've strategically placed, for example, strategically placed, not forgotten about, strategically placed. I don't want them to be in focus, but I want them to be a hint. So the aperture helps you do that. First and foremost, let's find the apertures on your cameras. So the controls, what we're gonna use for this is a feature called Aperture Priority. At an Aperture Priority, you as the user have the priority over the aperture. So you tell the camera, I wanna use this aperture setting. And you've already told your camera what ISO you're using because you've set it manually after last, last week's um, uh, sort of session with me. We're not using auto ISO, are we? No, Paul, we're not, we're not, we're not. So you've set your ISO, so you've told the camera how much light is available, effectively, and then you're going to aperture priority. So if you're a Canon user, you're looking on your function dial for um, AV, and that means aperture value. Anybody else, if you're looking at your camera thinking, I can't see an AV, you've got A, because you haven't got a Canon. Um, if you are a if you are um, a user of a mirrorless system, Fuji, for example, it's a slightly different way of attacking it, and you set that on your lens, you'll see the aperture values listed on the front of your lens. But <clears throat> this is why God gives us manuals. If in doubt, RTM. Yeah. So <clears throat> you flick your camera into aperture value A A V. Flick the the wheel on the front of the lens, depending on what camera you're using. And then, if you have a look at, at your readout, your display on the back of the camera, or you, some, some of you have a top panel, so just next to the shutter button, you'll see two, two figures. Generally, the left-hand side is your shutter speed, and the right-hand side is your aperture value. More modern cameras, last kind of three, four years, have an F, F for Foxtrot, next to the aperture value. If you then get your thumb wheel, which is a little wheel, right next to the bit you press to take the, sh take the picture, the shutter button, technical, um, then what you will find is, in aperture priority, aperture value A, however, you wheel that and your aperture value will change, but your shutter speed will also change. But we want to concentrate on that value that has the F next to it, or the one that's on the right hand side. Yeah, so you have two values, shutter speed is the first one on the left, next one is aperture, might have an F next to it. And just literally, if you, as you wheel that, you'll see the numbers going up. And we're going to have a look at that in detail in a second, what the numbers are, what the numbers mean, and how that affects your photograph. So I'm just going to go to my screen share, he says, hopefully. So DSLR 101, this is week two, this is Aperture. Um, don't worry, Mandy, um, if you have a look, Mandy is saying on the comments that, um, oh, I missed ISO last week, don't worry, jump onto my Paul Gregory Photography Facebook page, and it is in there in the videos. So, let's play this. So, 101 Aperture. 
what is an aperture? Okay, I've told you that an aperture does X, Y, and Z. It can, you know, it's, it controls the amount of detail and around your main point of focus. But what's an aperture? You know, it's those of you who have, you know, maybe you've done stuff like this with me in the past, have an inkling. Some of you may have Googled it, done a little bit of YouTube learning. But an aperture, a dictionary definition, it's a hole or an opening. Yeah, and that's created by the um, in the front of your lens, at the very, very front of your lens, there's something called diaphragm. And it's a series of generally seven to eight blades which open and close to create a hole in the front of your lens, which then controls the amount of light that comes through the lens into the camera body. Yeah, so um, that's what an aperture is. As I said, hey, it controls the amount of light entering the camera body through the lens. It also controls the depth of field of the image. Now, the depth of field, I touched on briefly a second ago, is the amount of detail in and around the main point of focus. So, as I said, if I'm photographing a cake, um, I can set where my camera focuses. There's a manual way to do it, and I'm going to talk to you about that in just a mo. And where that main point of focus is, that is where your depth of field. Depth of field, as I said, is the amount of detail in and around your main point of focus. So that's where your depth of field starts. You tell the camera where you want to focus, it says right, and that's where you start to create how much of the subject you see, how much of it is sharp, how much of it is blurry. Yeah, can you see it straight away? What's that on the back corner? Yeah, it's that type of thing. So, aperture range. Apertures, you have to have a reference. Yeah, it's all well and good the, the camera opening and closing the diaphragm at the front of the, um, the front of the lens, excuse me, to you know make the hole larger or smaller. But if you don't have a reference point, then you know you're a bit scuppered, really. So a low aperture value, as you see on the left hand side of our screen here, the a low aperture value for all intents and purposes f2.8. Now a lot of your cameras won't allow you to go down to f2.8, it's all down to the lens, okay? And the majority of your lenses, unless you've got like nice posh L series, high-end Nikon, you know, you've got expensive lenses, um, you'll only be, go to be able to get down to f3.5, f4. So f2.8, as we can see from this illustration, it's a large aperture, it's a big hole, lets lots of light through. But it has a low aperture value, a low number of f2.8. This confused the bejesus out of me when I first started doing um, photography, and it took me a while to get my head around it. I'm not going to lie, every now and again, I might use, I might say small aperture for a low aperture value, but I'll correct myself. Don't worry. Um, so a large hole, as illustrated on the far left-hand side of the screen, f2.8, lets lots of light in, and it's a low value. As the aperture itself physically gets smaller, so those blades contract as you go through the scale, so to 4, to 5.6, to 8, 11, 16, and 22, you will see that those holes physically get smaller. But as the holes get smaller, the aperture value gets larger. So a high number is... Um, is a smaller hole. Now, the way I think about this, and the way I've always explained this to people is, a large aperture gives you a low number and a big hole. So you have a low number, that gives you a low amount of detail in and around your main point of focus on your subject, okay? You go to the high number, the highest number you can get, you get a higher amount of detail in and around your main point of focus. This is backwards, okay? 2.8 should, in theory, is a low number, should give you a small hole. It doesn't. 2.8, F4, they give you large holes. So think about it. Small value, small amount of detail. High value, high amount of detail. So depth of field, we've talked about bottom left-hand side. So a large aperture gives you shallow depth of field. And depth of field, as I said, is the amount of detail in and around your main point of focus. So, for example, <clears throat> those of you with me a couple of weeks ago when I rushed a car crash of a video <laughs> for a Monday and I just rattled through aperture and shutter, more concise, more clear, more focused. Um, here we have three tins of beans. Other retailers are available. Um, so what you have here is I've got three tins of beans, equidistant-ish, 
Um, but the, the distance from the front tin to the second tin to the third tin is equal. So what I've done, I've focused on that front tin of beans, the one that's nice and sharp and you can read all the text. And at my aperture on my lens will go down to f2.8. So that's the largest hole I can get. That's the least amount of detail. Yeah, Lowest number, lowest amount of detail, f2.8. And I'll put a shutter speed in there of 100, 1 125th per second. Don't panic too much about this because I'm going to explain it in a second and shutter speeds we're going to touch on next week. So the thing is, aperture priority. You set the aperture, you tell the camera how much detail you want in and around your main point of focus. Great. <clears throat> and you've already set your ISO, so the camera knows how much light's coming in, what it needs to set its aperture at. And as I mentioned in the ISO um, session, it's kind of a three-way balancing act. So you've got your aperture, ISO as your base level, it's always where you start off, that's your entry point, ISO first. And in this case, I've decided I'm going to set my aperture in aperture priority. So I've got my ISO, I've got my aperture. The one thing then that hasn't been set is a shutter speed. Now, as we talked about last week, aperture controls are light coming through the lens into the camera body. And the shutter speed then controls how much light goes from the camera body <clears throat> into the image sensor. And it does that by opening at different, opening and closing. It's a blind opening and closing at different speeds. So here we are, f2.8 at 100, 1, 125th of a second. Shutter speeds are expressed as fractions. So let's go to the next image. I've gone to f4, so my focus point is still that front can of beans. Okay? Still that front can of beans. And what you're seeing is you're getting a bit more detail on that second can of beans coming in. But also, my shutter speed is halved. So it's got slower to a 60th of a second. Now this is the, you are in priority mode here. You've told the camera, I'm going from f2.8 to f4. Camera's going, okay, I'm still at ISO 400. Um, you're going for f4. 125th of a second is too fast. It's going to, it's going to make the image dark. You need to balance the amount of light coming in. I don't know what, I'll slow it down. And it takes half, because you've increased your, um, your aperture value by twice. You've doubled your aperture value effectively your then your shutter speed is going I need twice as much light. I know what I'll do, I'll drop the shutter speed down. So that's that. It then gone to f5.6 and you see the shutter speed has dropped again by half. So it's getting slower. FYI, if you decide to try this and you are doing this by hand, you don't have a tripod. Tripod, if you're playing with aperture you want to get your head around this, I would say is important. If you haven't got one and you can't be bothered to wait six weeks for Amazon to deliver one, um, prop the camera up on some books, keep it steady. Your cameras have got self timers, so you can basically, you can press the button, wait for t between two and 10 seconds, and it'll take the picture, so you're not touching the camera. A 60th of a second, this 1 60th, is what I call, anything under that, I refer to as camera shake territory. Because unless you are super steady, yeah, X marksman type, trying to hold your camera that still, and especially the values we're going to go down to as you see through this presentation, you're going to have trouble. So get yourself a tripod, prop it up on a on a couple of books, use your lens cap under the lens to balance it out so it's level, yeah? Improvise, overcome and adapt, as a very good friend of mine used to say. Um, so we've then gone to f5.6, down to a 30th of a second. Tripod mounted, steady as a rock. By having your camera tripod mounted when you're doing stuff like this, it may, helps keep the frame still. You'll see through these images, nothing's moved. You're seeing the same shot, same point of focus. Then we go into F8. Now, as we, as we cycle through these back from 2.8, F4, F8, F5.6, F8, F11. Look at these cans in the background and also look at this lovely fake tabletop that I've made. Yeah, <coughs> You've got more detail coming through. F16, down to a quarter of a second now. So every time you increase your aperture, you're halving your shutter speed. F22, so due to the lighting in this, unfortunately, you can't, the, the back can is focused, it's pretty much there, but you've got that highlight, the bright bit of the light just blipping on that back can where it says essential, I think, those other supermarkets are available. Um, yeah, so the highlight's just bleaching out, but it's sharp. So let's just go back. So f2.8, 4, 
Look at that. Look at that middle can. Yeah. And also look at the um, um, the background it's on, the um, the tabletop it's on. 5.6, 8. Look at that middle can come into focus. About F11, F16 is going to be sharp, and the background is going to come in just over F22. But as we go through, you're going to see that, for, that foreground, that, that tabletop we're on, is getting more and more and more and more and more in focus. And there is a slight texture on the background I've used. It's like a marble effect um, board. And if you look very carefully in the background, you'll see just over that first can, look just over the top of that first can, as I cycle up through 11, you're going to see that detail, top left-hand corner is coming in, it looks a bit marbly, yeah? That's a basic look at what Aperture does. So as you take your Aperture, as you make your, I'm going to come back to you guys, because I think it's time we talked rather than looking at... Um, do love to technology when it works. So yeah, <coughs> I'm back. So what you'll see is, as you start with a large aperture, a big hole, a low number, it's going to give you low amount of detail. So F2.8, F4, they give you low amount, lower, lower amount of details in and around your main point of focus. And as you go through, as you what we call stop down, as you increase your aperture value, each aperture value you've got, You'll see when you flick through your cameras, you're going to have f3.5, f4, f4.5, f5, f5.6, uh, 6.1, 7, f8, f9.1, f10, f11. And you're going to go, hang on, the values you've just shown me here are, they're different. You know, you've got all these little ones in, in between. As you siphon, as you cycle through your, um, your aperture values on your camera, what you will find is that these whole stops, now a stop is an increment, it's a movement between one number and, an, and another, between one setting and another, one point. And the aperture values I've given you, f2.8, f4, uh, f5.6, f8, 11, f16, 22, and even up to 30, uh, 29 and 32, if you've got lenses that will appreciate that, that can do that even, um, you will find that is a stop. So f2.8 to f4 is one stop. It's one full movement. Yeah. f4 to f5.6 is another movement. 5.6 to 8 is another movement. 8 to 11. 11 to 16. 16 to 22 is one movement. But you've got these third stops in between. I learn with the full aperture stops. Because back in the day when I learned about this 20 years ago. Um, it was. Yeah there were half stops and we didn't use them we just used the full values the four the 5.6 the 8 the 11s so that's why I'm giving you these details and say hey play with this so as you go through your aperture stops as you stop down stopping down means that you're closing the aperture down so from f4 to f5.6 you're getting that hole from there to there so you're closing down the aperture and you're moving up a single stop Sorry, I've got my techie head on today. Um, any kind of queries, throw them in the comments. I can see them. What is he talking about? Then stop me and I'll cover it. Um, so yeah, siphoning through these, cycling, siphoning, cycling. You will see that as you go from f2.8 or whatever your maximum aperture, the widest your aperture will go, it becomes clearer and clearer and clearer and you get more and more detail. Yeah, so just bear that in mind. Now, these are tins of beans. Yeah, I used to do this demonstration with um, Lego figures. Those of you who know me know I have a thing about Lego. Um, a man-child. Um, and, I don't know, um, jars of spices. But tins of beans, great. Notice I've used something that doesn't move, that is fairly solid, decent size, but it's still quite small in the grand, grand scheme of things. You're like, okay, but we're not food photographers. We're not going to set up tins of beans and, you know, little cakes and biscuits and stuff. I photograph... I want to photograph landscapes, I want to photograph trees, I'm into animals, blah, blah, blah. So how does depth of field work with that? How does your aperture work with that? Funny you should mention that. So. Size does not matter. If you can't see my screen, please drop it in the comment. 
otherwise I'll assume that I've worked the technology well. Size does not matter. Not commenting on that. Um, so what you've got here, um, around the corner from where I live, we have a common and there are about 12 or 13 horses on the common. On my daily government approved exercise walk, um, I go around the common, hours walk, and these, look, I've made some friends, made about 12 or 13 friends in horses. Um, and this one, Milky, was very kind enough to stand still for me, ish. So, if you, actually, this is a really good, I know there's three on one page, but I've done this for a reason. This is a horse. We've got sky in the background, grass in the background. If you have a look at the bottom right-hand corner of each of these images, you will see, I've started at f2.8. My focus point is a horse's eye, FYI. Um, I've started at f2.8. My ISO is 400, and as I've stopped down, as I've closed my aperture down to get more detail, increased the aperture value to a higher number, I have got, um, sorry, shot speed, but I'm also getting more detail. So if you have a look between the text I put in there on the bottom right-hand corner of each image and the horse's beard, <laughs> actually it's, it's his mane, isn't it? It just looks like a beard. Um, look at the detail in the grass coming through. So as you look through all of these, you will see that you get more detail coming through in the grass. Now this is because that is behind your point of focus. You're seeing more detail coming in. If you then look at the top left-hand corner of these images, so some um, buildings and some sort of tree defence in the background, you will see that you've got more detail coming in. So as you go from f2.8 to f4, to f5.6, aperture's changing, ISO remains the same, okay? Um, so you are getting all that lovely softness in the back, in the top left-hand corner of the first image, you're seeing more detail in the grass. You're starting to see a darker colour come through. Then we move, I've gone, then I've gone from f5.6, the last image, to f8, to f11, to f16. I've gone f22 as well, but to be honest with you, it was an odd number of images and I prefer to keep them. It's my OCD kicking in. Um, so look again, so you've gone up from f2.8 to f5.6 and then we're starting at f8 here on the left hand side image, f8, 800th of a second, excuse me, ISO 400. Then you go to f11, look at that detail coming in in the background. Yeah, and the more keen of you, the more keener eyed of you will notice, yes, a horse's head has moved, but also if you look back, you'll see that, that, that the ear in the background has started to come slightly more into focus from f2.8 right the way through to 4 and 5.6. But in these images, point of focus is still on the eye, yeah? Still, I had to give him a little bit of a hair shift. Very kind, she was very kind enough to let me just move her mane to one side because I couldn't see her eye. Um, not quite a comb over. But then you look at the top left hand corner and you'll see the detail across the three images is coming in more and more and more. Yeah, You can start to see more texture in the grass. You can start to make out what sort of building it is in the background. You can see more of the trees. Back down to the bottom right hand corner of the image, you can start to see more detail in the green, in the grass area. Yeah, So when you've got a plain background or something quite subtle, like a white table or that tabletop that I'm using here, it is a very simple, straightforward process. When you get and you get when you get out and you're taking things out and about, taking images out and about, you will see it will be more obvious to you as you cycle, as you cycle through your shutter speeds, that your your aperture values. Sorry, here we go. I haven't had any coffee yet. Um, you will get the um, start to see that detail coming in more and more. So, big things. Now, with all of these, you've noticed I'm kind of straight on-ish to the subject. Parallel is a problem. You want to shoot something, you want to take a picture of something, and you want to show a difference in that image. You think, oh, that's really good, but I'd like to see less detail. Let me give an example. This is one of my favourite examples. This is a brick wall. Funny that. It's literally just outside my door. Um, separates me and the neighbours. It's quite a nice brick wall, I think. I'm quite happy with the colours of the way it's come out. Shot this at f2.8. I am parallel to this wall. My neighbour saw it. was mental doing this the other day. What are you doing? Go off on the wall. Um, 
so I'm parallel to this wall. Yeah, I've made sure I'm absolutely parallel. It might not be straight, the wall's not straight, but I'm parallel, okay? And I've gone from F 2.8 to F8 to F22. I swear to you, this is, these are three different images. This is not the same picture. So F2.8, F8, F22. You can stand in front of something you're parallel to for a month of Sundays and cycle through every single aperture value you have available to you on your camera or your lenses. Yeah. And you will not show any difference in something you are straight and parallel to unless you change your position. Okay, Paul, so why the hell would I want to do this? Why would I want to stand in front of the wall and take a picture? That's another discussion. But <laughs> what you will find is, and you can get help, by the way, it's like readily available in the NHS. Um, what you will find is, sometimes, um, I went, um, I was in Chichester just after Christmas, and in Chichester, I don't know if you guys know it, but they have these really, it's not graffiti, it's artworks, murals. Um, or murals, as my grandmother would have said, murals um, on the walls in certain parts of Chichester, side streets. And by being parallel to something, you guarantee you're getting it in sharp focus. Yeah, and I was using my phone at the time. I wasn't exactly... Other brands are available. Um, I wasn't... You know, I didn't have my camera with me. It was dark-ish, late afternoon, late December. And, you know, it, I wanted to get this picture. And I found, hang on, I'm slightly off here. I'm slightly I'm slight to the left, I'm slightly to the right... I can't get this butte, this lovely kind of alien type um, people. Basically, it's two very long-legged people. Um, great, like uh, kind of look like Bod. For those of you who are of an age that can remember Bod, um, classic. But by keeping parallel to that wall, I was able to get my two Bods, for argument's sake, in focus. Yeah. Second, I moved my angle slightly to the right or to the left. One of them was slightly out, the other one was slightly out. And of course, it's an iPhone, don't particularly have much manual control. However, so this is your parallel images. Yeah, you're parallel to a wall, for whatever reason, you're photographing it, apart from the fact it looks pretty. 2.8, F8, 22, and you're not making a bit of difference. But if you move... Right, same, this is one point of focus. You can see my point of focus is pretty much that little kind of hole in the wall, as it were, that little dent in the brickwork. F2.8. Camera's on a tripod, it's static. It's not going anywhere. My frame is not going to move. My point of focus is not going to move. Now, if you would just go back, have a look. So where the hole in the wall is, where that little dent is, look at that first line to the right of mortar, cement, and then go to the second line of mortar and cement across, with 2.8 F8. <laughs> oh, look! It's coming back in. It's got a little lighter. That's a, something in my process. And then 22, you can see that top right-hand corner. Look at the top right-hand corner throughout this. F2.8, F8, F22. I've gone through this, and I've given you these three aperture values. I've given you minimum depth of field, at f2.8, I've then shot at medium depth of field at f8, and maximum depth of field that my lens can achieve at f22, rather than going 2.8, 4, 5.6, because you're going to get bored, and this just gives you, it's the impact, you go, yeah, boom, I can see that now. Yeah, so where are we? We're 22, 8, 2.8, look at that top right-hand corner, yeah? Bang, detail comes in. So the second, if you're photographing something parallel, and there's nothing behind it, and you need you want to get a bit more interest in a bit more detail. Yeah, my cursor doesn't show on here, Kit. I'm sorry. Um, I'll work out how to do that. But no, my cursor does not actually work on the screen. I'm trying to use on. No, it doesn't work. Sorry. So what you see is second you step off that line. I can't see it. Um, I can't use it. Um, so what you see on that line, as soon as you step off that parallel line, you, you get a difference. Okay? There are situations where you want to be parallel to something. And you've got, I don't know, you, you, um, Windsor Castle, for example. You know, you're at Windsor, 
when we're allowed to go out again, and you take a picture, you're back in the street, you've got Windsor Castle, you're parallel to Windsor Castle. Don't worry too much about that, because you're going to have um, the, the main point of focus on the castle, but then you're going to have stuff in the foreground and the background. Yeah? So this is where, yes, you're parallel, so you're guaranteed that anything that's on that parallel line is in focus. Yeah? So if you're shooting parallel to something, yeah, you will guarantee that that is in focus. Any second someone, anything is in front of that line or behind that line, it's, you will need to adjust your depth of field to either blur it a little bit or bring more detail in. I know you can see my cursor, guys, but I can't see it. The picture-in-picture, uh, -picture, share my screen thing, I can't use my cursor. My apologies. Um, so, yeah. So that kind of gives you an idea. Now, focus points. I've been. Have we got any questions before I go into focus points? Any questions about what I've talked about so far? Throw them in the comments. Is there anything I've not made particularly clear? Or is there anything that you just want to clarify? Okay. So just to, just to repeat, aperture value... Low number gives you small amount of detail. Sorry, low low aperture value. Low number gives you a low amount of detail in and around your main point of focus. We'll come to point of focus in a second. No, all clear. Thank you, Mandy. Um, and then a higher aperture value. Yeah, smaller hole, higher number gives you a higher amount of detail in around your main point of focus. Worth being aware. That when you get close to a subject, you zoom in or use a macro lens, your depth of field changes completely. But that's another conversation for another video because uh, we could be here for hours talking about that. Um, so, points of auto, uh, choosing your points of focus, autofocus points. Straight out of the box, when you turn your camera on, um, you press a shut button halfway down, you're excited, you've got your new toy, whatever, you put your memory card in, your batteries in, you turn it on, you pick it up to take a picture, and you then basically, let's just, I'm going to come back to me. Hello, I'm back. So, your autofocus points are set automatically straight out of the camera. So you pick the camera up, you take your picture, and you press it, you want to take your picture, you take Press your shutter button halfway down, that's the thing that you press to take the picture, the shutter release. Um, yeah, I know, sorry. You press that halfway down, you hear a little bleep, and you see some lights in front of you in your viewfinder. Or if you're using the screen as a viewfinder, viewfinder, better, far better, um, you will see some lights, some illuminated squares, some little dots pop up in your viewfinder. Yeah, Those are telling you where your points of focus are. Okay, so your point of focus is where the camera is focusing and it will tell you what you are doing. So let's go back to my PowerPoint. Sorry, my pages. And also focus points. Your focus point plays a major part in achieving your desired depth of field. So you are telling the camera where you want to focus. But straight out the box, the camera will decide, <laughs> I'm in control here. Yeah, It will be on auto, auto, or, automatic autofocus point selection. Try saying that after a couple of drinks. Um, but the automatic focus point setting will pick out the largest subject in your scene or the closest thing. So the automatic stuff will pick up the largest or the closest thing in your scene. Yeah. And I've got the postman at the door, so I'm really sorry. I'm just going to have to leave you for a second. Sorry guys, joys of lockdown, my apologies. That last 30 seconds of silence was Marcel Marceau's new single, Walking in the Wind. Anyway, so <laughs> your automatic focus points were, will pick up the largest, um, largest or closest thing to your camera, okay? Um, 
but you can choose. So manual autofocus selection points allow you to select where the camera focuses. Okay. Right, I apologise for kind of being very Canon focused, but hey, I'm a Canon user and that's what I do. So these images, this is for a Canon user, you will see on the top of your camera, there's a little icon, which is a little square, a little rectangle, even with a load of dots in it. And the image on the right hand side of this shows you the button on the back of the camera underneath that icon. Okay, so what you would do is you would press that button underneath that icon on the far, far right hand side of the camera. And as soon as you press that button and use your thumb wheel, which if you look at the image on the top left hand side here, you've got a little wheel. That's what I mean when I say a thumb wheel. Just generally just to the side of or behind the shutter button, which is that lovely button on the front. Yeah. So by pressing this um, autofocus points adjustment button, yeah, which has got the 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 rectangle with the uh, with the dots in it, and on the other image you'll see where it's located underneath. Holding that and moving your thumb wheel left and right, you will see your autofocus points shift in front of you, and you can then tell the camera how you want to do it. If you're a Nikon user, um, sometimes it depends on your model. On the camera, you've got a little switch on the back of the camera next to the LCD, and it has um, a big square, a square inside a square, and a square inside a square inside a square. And that then allows you, it's a little switch that flick between those three, and you can then um, choose your auto points of focus. Again, um, sorry, I don't profess to know everything about every camera, but it's a matter of RTM, guys. Yeah. Um, have a look at your manual. If you haven't got a hard copy manual, jump onto your manufacturer's website. There are downloads and supports. You'll be able to download a, 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 several hundred pages of PDF from your manufacturer's website and get, and you'll then be able to see how to do this. But fairly straightforward, actually. If you have a posh camera that has a touch screen on the back of it, and you decide you're going to use your um, uh, your autofocus points with the touch screen or you're using your screen as a viewfinder um, you can literally you can just touch where you want the focus point to be genius huh absolute genius so that's that so as I said your autofocus points here you see that red dot on the left hand side um, that is where I, that's me selecting a point of focus yeah, so I've decided that branch is where I want the point of focus to be. That image was then shot at f4 from memory. So you've got the point of focus on the branch there. The branches where they're closer to that point of focus are in focus. Where they're behind or in front of, they're a bit soft. But then you can see that lovely sky in the background is soft and fluffy and lovely. So, so far... Have I lost you? Is there anything specifically you'd like to run through? Is there any, are there any questions regarding controlling your aperture, what your aperture does? Yeah, is there any questions at all? Ping them into the um, into the comments. Anything? Have I lost you? Have I gone too fast? Do you want to see one of those? Do you want to see any of the images again and get an explanation on the images again? Hmm. Those of you that have, there's a couple. I can see there's a couple of you on the um, on the chat here, and I can see who's watching. A couple of you are have done this with me before. You've learned with me before. You've learned a bit of photography. Um, there's no harm in revisiting this. There's no harm of those of you that haven't set your aperture manually before and haven't played with your um, haven't played with the aperture setting at the field. I'm back. There we go. What you will find is, cheers, Mark Kelly. Um, what you'll find is, practice makes perfect. So my cans of beans, my walk with the horses. Yeah, it's a matter of just getting out and trying it and going. Do you know what? I'm going to try and go from f4 to 5.6 to 8 to 11 to 16 to 22 and use that as a reference. When I teach uh, my adult education centres, when I teach my courses there, I give everybody homework. 
um, <laughs> which really goes down not particularly well. Um, but it's it's kind of practical reinforcement of the theory we've talked about. So what I would suggest is um, this PDF, within minutes, I'm going to pop it up in the comments of the uh, of this video when this video ends um be a link to a dropbox account um and you can literally go in there and you can download the pdf of this presentation and you can flick through okay also i put last week's um eventually worked out how to do it but last week's um information on iso in the presentation in the pdf format again in a in a dropbox link so you can go in there and have a look you can pick up last week's you can pick up today's so it's there but what i would recommend you do if you've got 10 minutes not like we're all kind of rushing out today um stick the camera on a tripod stick the camera on something solid yeah whatever you happen to have to hand yeah tins of soup tins of beans and coke cans beer cans whatever you happen to have to hand you know bottles of wine and just play with it and see what happens. Also, it's worth mentioning, which I didn't, your point of focus with my tinned of beans, if I'd have focused on the center, on, on that middle one, on tin number two, and f2.8, and then increased my aperture that way, depth of field doesn't just work front to back, yeah? It works from your main point of focus. I get this question a lot. Um, it works from your point of focus. So if you start on that middle tin of beans, and then you go from f2.8 to 4 to 6 to 5.6 nearly to 8 to 16. As you increase your depth of field, as you make your aperture value higher and stop down that, that, um, that aperture, the hole gets smaller, you can increase your depth of field, your amount of detail from that center tin front and back. So if you're trying to focus, if you're trying to get um, something in focus, Landscape's a really good idea. Let's go back to Windsor Castle, for example. Okay, lovely sky in the background, beautiful blue sky, a bit of cloud. Um, you've got tourists running around. Obviously, this is about six months ago. Tourists running around in front of you. Yeah, and you want to get that hustle and bustle. So you focus on the castle, and then you that would be your main point of focus. Rather than focusing on the tourist in front of you, because you focus on the tourist in front of you and you go to F22, you're probably going to get... the Tourists are what? They're probably about 30-odd feet from the castle, maybe a bit more. Um, you're going to have trouble getting the castle in focus. So you're going to get the tourists taking selfies in front of the castle, but you don't get a picture of um, the Winter Castle. If you then go back and focus on the castle itself, that's the centre point in your image. So you've got the background and the foreground of the castle with bang slap in the middle. You focus on that, and you then increase your depth of field. It's going to bring the focus from the castle, from the centre point of focus, out. You've got more chance of getting as much in focus as physically possible. It depends on distance. Yeah? Depends on the distance you are from your subject. Depends on the distance your main point of focus, your main subject is, from everything else in the shot. But it's worth playing with. Yeah? Um... Cool. So unless there, who's laughing at me? Um, unless there's um, any questions, anything like that, I will ping the, I will pop the um, the link into this video when I've finished it on my Facebook page. Please feel free to share this. I'm going to do another one next Saturday. I'm hoping 11 o'clock is okay for everybody. Um, and yeah, it'll be shutter speed next week. Any questions, any queries, please feel free to drop me a DM. Yeah, most of you have contact details for me anyway. Otherwise, you can get hold of me um, through Instagram or Facebook. Um, yeah, drop me a DM on there. I will stick this information up shortly. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience. I'm going to have a coffee. Um, have a great Saturday. Please stay indoors. Guys, come on. The, sooner, the more we stay indoors, the sooner this will be over. Um, take care. Stay safe. No face touchy, lots of hand washy, uh, lots of love. Ciao for now.